Good evening. Thank you. Uh, so I was born in 1952, post formation of the State of Israel and post the Egyptian Revolution. Um, my memories obviously are um, for the period after the establishment of the state and during the reign and presidency of uh, uh, Gamal Abdel Nasser. And um, it's very different of what it used to be prior to uh, the formation of the state. And as I grew older, uh, I really got to appreciate what my life was growing up as a child and through the day that I left Egypt at the age of 15 in 1967 following the Six Day War. So my memories include living in Israel, through, uh, living in Egypt through the Six Day War and I will recount some of the stories and, um, and what I endured during that period. So prior to the, prior to the formation, uh, Jews in Egypt enjoyed a pretty good life. Um, they were important merchants in the, in the country. Uh, there were stores, department stores like Shikorel, Catenio. Uh, there was a bank in Egypt, the Moseri Bank. Uh, the chief rabbi of Egypt was the private translator to the king, King Farouk. And, and so they lived a pretty good life. Um, my dad used to tell me stories of uh, partaking in events with, uh, with members of the royal court um, and uh, enjoyed a pretty decent life over there. When the State of Israel was established, although the threats that we heard were being made by the uh, ministry in Egypt, the king and the royal court really um, did not feel the same way because the Jews did um, uh, encourage and did support the, the, the king of Egypt, King Farouk. And so the hate was not quite as much. Although the formation of the state caused some 20,000 Jews to leave Egypt at the time and move on to Israel. Uh, between 1948 and 1956, it's only about 5,000 Jews that immigrated out of Egypt. Keep in mind that prior to all this, there was probably about 85,000 Jews that lived in Egypt at the time. Fast forward 1956, we have the Suez Canal War. Israel, France, and Great Britain are the three countries uh, fighting Egypt. And that is the beginning of the end, in my mind, of the Jewish population in Cairo. At that point, some 25,000 Jews are mostly expelled out of Egypt. Uh, many of the adult males were interred at that time and were in concentration camps and left the concentration camps on their way out. I recall in 1956, at the age of four, in my house, in my apartment, where it was a three-bedroom apartment, uh, two families, my uncles and aunts, joined us on the eve of their departure, and we were three families in that house. And keep in mind, the war was taking place, and we were under dimmed lights uh, and darkness because any light coming out of our balconies or out of our windows would suggest that we were spies and giving, um, giving uh, signals to the enemy. Um, going forward after that, the most impressionist period in my life is 1967 the breakout of the Six Day War. And um, June 5th, 1967, at about 3 p.m., the door knocks 
and three policemen walk into our apartment and my father is taken away and interred uh, in a concentration camp uh, where I would say 95% of the Jewish male population between the ages of 16 and um, 70 were picked up that afternoon and a couple days later. By, by June 8th, they were all rounded up and put in prisons. Uh, they were um, tortured. Uh, they were put in, uh, in cells where they basically had to pile up on each other. Um, 70 men were thrown in one cell, uh, typically a room that would be a maybe 10 by 15. Uh, and, and just imagine the size of the room and 70 men lying in there, one on top of each other. Uh, they were given bread, as my father used to say, he can throw it against the wall and it would bounce back because of it being stale. And they were given cheese that was infested with maggots. Mm. Uh, and, that was their, and that was their food. Um, we did not have any contact with them uh, for probably two to three months until finally uh, we started, the Red Cross got involved and, uh, and we got communication from them knowing where they were and knowing that they were alive. Um, they used to be woken up during, during the Six Day War. Uh, they would wake them up in the middle of the night and humiliate them to sing nursery rhymes and say, this is the Israeli National Anthem. And, um, and furthermore, um, there was Nazi soldiers in the camp um, teaching the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian guards how to mistreat them. Luckily, uh, it didn't go as far as what happened in Germany, but nonetheless, they were mistreated. Uh, they, would, they would walk in courtyards barefoot and naked and be, uh, be hit with uh, palm leaves. A uh, couple of brothers, young brothers, were being, co were being forced to, to commit uh, homosexual acts uh, fortunately, um, they did not go through with it, and they, they allowed them to leave, but the pressure from what we had heard was, uh, was pretty bad. Um, in, on, in the streets, leading up to the Six-Day War, banners, every block of the city, we will kill the Jews, we will drown them in the Red Sea, um, we will destroy Zionism. Uh, everywhere you walked around, that's what it was. But something happened. Saturday morning, <coughs> six days later, I woke up, I'm 14 years old, I'm on my way to, my father was, as I said, in prison, and I'm on my way to, to synagogue. And all these banners were gone. Overnight, they took them down. And we knew at that point that the war was over. One other thing that was happening during that six-day period, um, <clears throat> I, uh, we would listen, the Egyptians had a story that uh, planes were being dropped like flies, Israeli, the Israeli Air Force was, uh, was disappearing, and luckily I had the ability to intercept a radio broadcast in Arabic from Israel uh, for three days, and I got the account of the, of the story from that end, and I knew at that point that Israel was winning the war despite the fact that the Egyptians were uh, telling us otherwise. Uh, those are brief moments of my life during my stay in, uh, in uh, Egypt. I left Egypt November 10, 1967, and I arrived to the United States March Middle of March, 1968. Thank you.